Hi there, I'm Athena Parakas, the founder of Sage Goddess. And I'm here today with a topic that doesn't get discussed enough, in my opinion, and that is the topic of anxiety and overthinking and energy. So one of the top things I hear in my role um, as the founder of Sage Goddess and someone who teaches online classes and holds ceremonial space and offers rituals online, I am hearing from people around the world a couple of things consistently. They're more anxious than they've ever felt. They are feeling anxiety and insecurity in relationship. And they are overthinking everything. And I'm hearing this from people who are in their teens, people in their 20s, people in their 30s, and people my age who are about to go into their 50s. So whether you're young or my age, going into middle age, I don't think any of us are immune from the effects of overthinking and anxiety. So I'm here today to offer you my perspective on what I think really is at the root of anxiety. I was a professor for 15 years of education, and so I am always going to geek out a little bit. I think there's some science behind anxiety we should look at. And one of the things you should know is if you are overthinking and you've got running thoughts, um, one of the things you might want to consider is that you may have been through at some point in your life some kind of traumatic experience. And I would almost say raise your hand or comment below if you've been through something that you feel has been really difficult or traumatic for you. A lot of us have. And what happens is when you experience trauma, there's a physiological response. A couple of things happen. Um, one of the things that happens is the amygdala, which is a part of your brain, it's an organ in your brain, um, expands. And that's your trauma center. What the amygdala does is it scans your environment to see if what you're going through right now is like anything else you've ever gone through before. And if it is, it goes ding dong, we've had this experience before, and it expects that you're gonna have the same kind of experience that you previously had. And if that was a very negative experience, that's the amygdala's job is to prepare you for fight or flight. Are we gonna stay and fight? Or are we gonna run? Or are we going to freeze? Or there's another response called fawn which is like playing dead. The amygdala is responsible for that. Now, the amygdala, when people have trauma, and there's a lot of science behind this, gets bigger. And when we have more trauma, it gets bigger. And then what happens is the hippocampus, which is responsible for memory, at the same time often gets smaller. So the amygdala is getting bigger, the hippocampus is getting smaller. And so do you ever have moments when you're really stressed and, and overthinking and all of a sudden your short-term memory feels kind of off? Like it's because you're spending so much time on fear and fight and flight, which are survival mechanisms that your the other parts of your brain are maybe struggling. And so you might experience other symptoms like, yeah, you know what? My short-term memory hasn't been that great. <laughs> or um, I'm finding that I can't, I can't put things together. I'm not thinking as clearly. My brain seems kind of foggy. Have you had that when you're going through overthinking too? So these are all protective mechanisms in your brain. This is, these are all good things. Your brain is trying to focus on where you are right now focus, 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 which we call overthinking. Because <laughs> most of us are not actually in physical danger most of the time, right? Our ancestors were like, oh, a bear is chasing you, you better run. Um, if you think a bear is chasing you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, what's going to happen to your body, to your adrenal glands? You're going to get exhausted. We can't stay in fight, we can't stay in flight, and we can't stay in freeze or fawn. That's not how we operate and that's not how human beings thrive. And what happens is the whole body starts to um, morph into a state of resistance. And oftentimes that shows up as something called autoimmune disease. So this can get into a much longer conversation and I don't want it to be too medical or too scientific and I don't want you to worry. But what I do wanna tell you is you're not alone if you're feeling very anxious. Anxiety is often the result of minor or major but especially sustained trauma, going through so much stress day after day, in and out, going through sustained periods of grief and loss, going through sustained periods of challenge in relationships can lead to this kind of experience. Um, even going through, if you're young, going through sustained challenges at school, being bullied, right? Um, being overwhelmed, not feeling held and supported. So kind of feeling like everything's coming at you, but you don't have a way to release your stress or to find support. 
So I want to take you through a brief breathing exercise. And this is happening right at the five minute mark in this video. And I'm telling you that, and we'll put that in the comments too in the description because in the future, if you wanna come back to this video just for the breathing exercise, like you've learned everything you need to know and now just give me the, give me the, tell me what to do. You can go right to the five minute mark and I'll lead you through this breathing exercise. If this video resonates with you, you might wanna save it. And that way you can go back to it later. You can always find it here on YouTube. When you There's a nerve in your body called the vagus nerve, not spelled like Las Vegas, it's V-A-G-U-S. It's the biggest nerve in your body. It touches every major organ. And your breathing is what helps to tone or relax the vagus nerve. So when you breathe in the way I'm about to teach you, you are telling every organ in your body that you're okay, which takes you out of that fight, flight, freeze, fawn, response, okay? If a bear is chasing you, you will not be able to breathe the way I'm about to tell you to breathe. <laughs> but if you're okay, and in this moment you probably are, you may not feel like it, but you probably are safe, <clears throat> we're gonna do an exercise right now that tells your body you're safe. And remember, your body is holding the keys to your peace and to your balance and to your alignment, to your joy. You ready? So I want you to roll your shoulders back. I'm gonna ask you just to call your energy into present time. I like to do that by putting my hand on my heart. And if you can really just physically touch your heart and just feel your heart beat, that's the first sign of your life on this planet. It'll be the last sign before you leave. And bring your attention to your breath. And close your eyes, it helps. The less information, sensory information that comes into your body, the less overwhelmed you'll be. If you ever have anxiety, literally that old saying, stop, drop, and roll, just close your eyes, turn off sounds, stop touching anything, watch your breath. It'll instantly bring you into a deeper state of peace, right? And just start to notice your breath. Don't control it, just noticing where you are. Let your breath breathe you, right? It does anyway, it's not an autonomic system. So you don't have to tell your body to breathe, right? It does it when you're not looking. <laughs> just letting your breath be. Let's take a moment just to be grateful for our breath and our life force, right? Thank you. Thanking your body and, and every part of your body, your cells. Your body does so much work for you every day. It's your constant companion. It's your sacred temple. So just noticing your breath, being grateful for the container that your soul is housed in for a moment. We're often unkind to that container, so it's nice just to take a moment to notice how beautiful it is, and it's uniquely yours, so it's special. And if you notice thoughts, the best thing I can tell you and teach you today is just let the thoughts come, notice, and then let it move forward, almost like it's just smoke moving through a window or a wall. It's just like it's there, but it, then it disappears. We're not judging our thoughts. We're not trying to control our thoughts. We're just noticing and releasing, right? No thought is more special than another thought. You also don't have to attach or align to your thoughts. They're not all true. So we can say, well, that's interesting. Thank you so much. You can also give permission to your thoughts to be released. So you can say disconnect and thank you. So you can notice a thought that really isn't serving you or isn't kind to you. You can say, oh, that's interesting. Well, I'm gonna disconnect from that and thank you so much. You can also take a thought that's disrupting your peace right now, wrap it in a bubble of light and put it just beyond your arm's length. That way it's just off in the distance and it's there, it's glowing, but it's not right in your field. And you can do that with people. You can do that with um, anything that's bothering you. Just, I see you, I put you in a beautiful bubble of light and just off beyond my arm's length you go. So you're not in my field right now. And wow, that gives you a sense of spaciousness first, doesn't it? And stillness. <sighs> Nothing has to be in your field. If it's there, it has your permission. If it doesn't have your permission, it can sit outside the field. And then we can choose to bring things into our conscious awareness. So the vagus breath is this. It is double the exhale of the inhale. So we can do, um, and I like to hold in the middle, but not everybody can do this. If you have asthma or if you have COPD, this might be a little more challenging. I'm gonna teach you the beginner version, which is just called two, four. You can even do a one, two and keep it really simple. So it'd be inhale for one, exhale for two. 
A two, two, four is really nice. You inhale for two, hold for two, exhale for four. That's a longer, slower. If you can't hold in the middle, that's okay. As long as the exhale is twice as long as the inhale, the vagus nerve is softening and relaxing. And that's going to activate the parts of your nervous system that tell your entire body we are safe. This is really good for your root chakra if you feel afraid and anxious. So good in the middle of the night, you'll be amazed at how quickly you fall back asleep. Put the thoughts and people outside of your field in a bubble of light, send them love, and then call in this, this vagus uh, breathing technique. Work with this and you'll be asleep in just a few minutes. So let's try a one-two. Just simple, simple. Again, if you have any breathing difficulties, this will be good for you. It's not gonna raise your heart rate. So let's just inhale for one and exhale for two. Are you ready? So go ahead and inhale. And exhale through your nose. That's it. Now doing it once isn't gonna be enough. So I like to do a series of 10, 11, whatever number you like. So let's inhale, let's do a one, two, but let's do it three times just to practice together. So let's inhale and exhale. And inhale for one, exhale for two. And one more time, inhale for one, exhale for two. Mm, beautiful, simple, easy, right? If you wanna challenge yourself a little bit, if you don't have breathing difficulties, um, then what I'm gonna challenge you to do is do a two, four, or a two, two, four. A two, four is just inhale for two, exhale for, for four. A two, two, four is inhale for two, hold for two, exhale for four. So we're gonna try a two, four first. Let's inhale for two, exhale for four, ready? So let's go ahead and inhale for two, and exhale for four. It gets easier every time. Go ahead and inhale for two. And exhale for four. Inhale for two. Exhale for four. Now you can start going crazy and do a four eight. But you don't need to do that. The two four is actually my favorite. And then my most favorite of all is the two two four or some people do a two, three, four. But the key is inhale is half as long as the exhale and you hold in between. So let's try inhaling for two, holding for two, exhaling for four. And I want you to notice before we do, are you feeling better already? Because we've been practicing a little bit. Do you notice how this slows the vibration a little bit? You might've been up here and you start to come down. For me, this is the breathing equivalent of a glass of wine, truly because just like alcohol will slow the vibration, lower the vibration, but can cause depression, this is gonna slow the vibration without the side effects. And so it really becomes a powerful technique. I also like this because you can do this in a stressful meeting and nobody knows you're doing it. You can do it at a stoplight. You can do it in the middle of an argument with someone. You can do it in bed. You're not disrupting anyone. And so it's a very beautiful, invisible secret weapon in your peace and balance and anti-anxiety toolkit. Okay, ready? Let's do a two, two, four. So we're gonna inhale for two, hold for two, and exhale for four. Ready? Inhale, hold, and then release, exhale. Inhale for two, hold for two, exhale for four. And one more time, inhale for two, hold for two, and exhale for four. That one does it for me. It almost takes me out of my waking state of consciousness into that daydreamy state that we always talk about, going from beta state to alpha state, which is just a softer state of consciousness. It's not quite meditation, but it's definitely a little bit softer. And again, in any time of day or any state of being, this is instantly going to tell your entire body on a cellular level, you are not in danger. We don't have to fight, we don't have to fly, we don't have to freeze and we don't have to fawn. And so what that does is balance all the chakras. It starts to heal your lower chakras in particular, which are always activated when you're having anxiety. And it also just, there's, there's a level of knowing in your body that is, is aligned to your breath that goes beyond words. You can say to yourself any mantra or keyword or I am safe or I am whole, 
but nothing speaks to your nervous system like the breath. It is an unspoken, beautiful language, and it's accurate and true every time. And our ancient ancestors knew this. Breathing techniques take, take us back to the Vedas, the original spiritual texts of this planet that predate Christianity and every other spiritual tradition. So what I'm teaching you today is nothing new, but I wanted to connect it to some of your neurology and some of your understanding of your nervous system, because a lot of us have been living in fight or flight since COVID, since the pandemic. And it's almost like we never quite came back to that state of being, of presence, of knowing that everything will be okay. But your body knows on a level that defies words and language that you are okay. And your mind will try to trick you out of things or trick you into things. Remember, no attachment to thoughts. Let them come, let them go. Remember to continue to connect with your breath in every moment. And I think the most important piece of advice I can give you in general for releasing anxiety is to remember and I always tell my children this too, I have a test. So they'll say, should I worry about this? Whatever it is that they're talking about or we're talking about. And I'll say, okay, well, let's do the seven rule. Will this matter to you in seven hours? Maybe. Will this matter to you in seven days? Mm, I'm not sure. Will this matter to you in seven weeks? I don't think so. Will this matter to you in seven months or seven years? If you can only answer yes to the first one, seven hours, it's probably best for you to let it go now. If it'll matter to you in seven days, give it some thought. If it won't matter to you in a day or a week from now, is it really worth overthinking, overattending? The other piece of advice I'll give you is, and this is a funny one, but it's really, really true. Nothing's about you. When people say things and do things, most of the time they're not thinking of you. Now that can seem insensitive, but it's also a relief. It's very easy as human beings to over imagine our importance in other people's lives. And so remember that this is a huge universe and it brings me a lot of peace to know that I'm a very tiny being in that big universe. And so remember not to take yourself too seriously. It's not about you. And so your life is about you, your well-being is about you, but what other people do and say is usually more a reflection of them than it is about you. Everybody in this universe is a mirror of each of us. And so focusing on you, they say do you, but it's really true. And so when your thoughts are racing, come to your breath, come to your heartbeat. Remember that most things are not about you. They will pass in seven hours, seven weeks. And if, they, if you know that's to be true already, it's best just to let things go now. And your grandmother's wisdom that everything will be okay, she was probably right, or your grandfather or whoever it is that told you that. And if nobody told you that, I'm telling you. If it isn't, if it hasn't turned out well, it isn't over yet. <laughs> there's, always, there's always a resolution in the universe. There's a beautiful balance and an intelligence that has created the force behind all life. And so try to trust that. A little bit more than you do now, you'll find that anxiety does dissipate. I hope this has been helpful today for you to learn about your brain and how your brain works and your brain on anxiety and also how to manage some of the stress that we all face every single day. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to do more content like this for you. And if you're having struggles or particular challenges that you're facing, let us know in the comments. If there's particular videos you'd like us to make, we'd love to make them for you. It's my joy and my pleasure to be your teacher. Again, Sage Goddess is turning 12 in July, but I've been teaching since I was 22. It's really my passion. And so let us know what we can bring you that you would love to see.